Shad spawn, ladies and gentlemen, the shad spawn. The shad spawn is something that every single year I try to capitalize on because it is a great time to catch really big fish and have an opportunity to catch a lot of really big fish. So what is the shad spawn? So essentially, the shad spawn is the time in which shad make babies, and more specifically, threadfin shad start to make babies. When the water hits about 70 degrees, the threadfin shad start to spawn, and they spawn very, very early in the morning and very, very late in the evening. And when I say very, very early, I mean like you've got to be at the lake and be on your spot before the sun cracks the horizon and you've got from about the time the sun cracks the horizon the sun starts to come up till about seven o'clock and then they are done they they love to spawn in those low light conditions and in the shad spawn is fascinating because there will be thousands hundreds of thousands sometimes millions of shad that move up and they spawn now they don't spawn like bass spawn they don't make little beds and you know lay little eggs and there's a little shad that guards the bed no they essentially spray and pray and hope that everything kind of comes together and little baby shad are born and every single year it must work because there are tons and tons of shad in our lakes and you'll really kind of see them they'll be swimming around um, they'll be flopping up on the bank they'll be rolling and bumping into each other and, and as we talk about the baits that we fish today, they'll bump into your bait thinking that it's other shad. And it is just a really, really cool experience overall. And really a great time to put fish in the boat because with all those shad up shallow, every predatory fish in the lake is going to be up there capitalizing on the fact that these fish are vulnerable. And so they'll go up there and they'll crush them in. And when I say every predatory fish, I'm talking stripers, I'm talking rockfish, I'm talking bass, muskies, bluegill, every single thing will be up there. And you know, more specifically, we're talking about bass fishing today and the tools I like to use for bass fishing, but you'll have a chance to catch a lot of bycatch and I have caught some 35 and 40 pound stripers fishing some of these baits as well as catching five and six pound largemouth and smallmouth and even spots fishing these baits. So just a really great time and opportunity to go bass fishing. Now another thing I need to mention before we get into the baits is kind of the areas that shad like to spawn. Shad spawn happens around hard cover and that can be any hard cover. It can be man-made or it can be natural. You know it can be wood, it can be rock, it is anything that those shad can get on that is hard cover that's the primary thing that they want to be on and that's what they want to spawn in I've even seen them spawn in grass like on grass flats and on the edges of grass and stuff like that but the best shad spawns I've ever seen are on things like dam walls on riprap around dams on man-made structure like docks and things like that that's been the best shad spawn that I've ever seen and then I've also seen them spawn on more natural cover like lay downs and just natural rocks and beaver dams and things like that usually those shad spawns are a little bit more sporadic and they're kind of target oriented because there's only so many of those targets in the water whereas the shad spawns that are on the bigger pieces of cover like the dam walls and the riprap tend to be massive and you'll have thousands of hundreds of thousands of shad that move up there and I'll start spawning at one time and so today with all that being said I kind of want to talk about the tools that I have ready for the shad spawn and the tools that I've had the most success with to put fish in the boat during the shad spawn so I've got literally boxes and boxes of stuff laying here to go through because the shad spawn is a time that you know we can catch a lot of fish because we've got a lot of baits that look like shad and a little bit of everything will work to help put fish into the boat so my favorite way to catch them is going to be on a top water and I have a box full of top waters here but obviously something that looks like a shad that is about the same profile as a shad and something that is going to make a lot of noise I found that to be the most important thing is something that is obscenely loud and just obtrusively loud you know something that really gets those fish's attention tends to be important because i think what happens is with so many bait fish up there that those fish have a hard time picking out exactly what they want to eat and i oftentimes say it's hard to get them to eat the fake hamburger when the real hamburger's swimming right there in the water with them and so i usually throw something that's big that's loud disturbs a lot of water it's got really loud rattles to help to kind of make that thing stand out in the just mass of real shad that are swimming around up here. This right here is a Berkeley Jaywalker. Um, I like these Berkeley Jaywalkers because of the sound. 
they have a very kind of different sound, a very loud sound that tends to get those fish's attention. Another one of my favorites, and you can obviously see this thing is eight auto pieces, is the Strike King Sexy Dog. Again, got a kind of different sound. You know, it's a little bit more low pitch, it's a little bit more high pitch, just giving those fish a completely different sound, something different for them to hear. Another thing that I like are the big pencil popper style baits. Um, the big pencil popper style baits are a great way not only to catch largemouth, but to also catch some big stroppers as well. Um, because obviously the bigger the profile, the bigger the fish that's going to eat it. But that big, this is the cane walker. This is the Berkeley cane walker. A very, very big, it's a 130 size bait. Again, very loud. And that cupped mouth, you can work it super, super hard. It throws a ton of water and again just something big something loud really really gets those fish's attention now that being said obviously the big and the loud when you're around a lot a lot of shad can be super super effective but sometimes you got to be a little bit more subtle and a little bit more quiet especially when you're doing the more target oriented fishing and that's where another topwater comes into play for me and that is going to be the frog you know when i'm really kind of hitting specific targeted shad spawns or if i'm fishing around some shad that are spawning way back up in some cover like i do with my river fishing that's when i'm going to pick up a frog now a frog is a really really cool tool for the shad spawn not only because is it subtle and is it great for those more target oriented and more pressured fish but it also kind of fits that size profile almost perfectly of those shad if you guys have ever caught a thread fin shad or looked at the thread fin shad excluding the tails on that frog that body profile is it that is how big those shad are and so this is a tool that you can get in and out of places you can't get your big top waters it's a lot more subtle it's a lot more target oriented you can spend a lot more time just walking this frog back and forth almost making those 180 degree walks and just leave this thing hanging in an area and you would be amazed the fish that will eat this thing i've got a lot of really big bites again especially when it's more that target oriented shad spawn kind of deal the next tool is going to be a spinnerbait a spinnerbait is again a fantastic tool for the shad spawn and i have so many different spinnerbaits in here so many different colors so many different varieties um and the thing is, it's kind of pick your poison, you know what I mean? It's like, what do you want to throw? What do you want those fish to eat? I mean, you know, what are your fish wanting? I've seen times when they want the more kind of finesse style spinnerbaits, like this mega bass spinnerbait that I have here. And then I've also seen times when you got to throw something really loud with that chartreuse on there. And I think, again, it's kind of picking, are you, are you kind of targeting the more isolated shad spawns is more target, targeted shad spawns are you targeting the mass shad spawns and so like the mass shad spawns that's where you know colors like this come in this is a nickels color i honestly forget it's it's actually got shad spawn in the name i think it's called clint's shad spawn and so it's just a very very crazy bright dark all kinds of just very standoutish you know what i mean it stands out in the mass of shad and then this one is your more natural kind of finesse in that mega bass spinnerbait those smaller blades that kind of you know less of a skirt there more fine skirt and it is great for that more targeted shad spawn and so i will link a bunch of different spinner baits down below that i've used over the years and that i've liked and i'll kind of put out beside them this is more of that bigger louder shad spawn and this is more of that kind of more quiet kind of deal that we've got going on but just the spinner bait again a very very effective tool overall and you know for many many years this was like the go-to bait for the shad spawn and i'm really hoping that this year the spinner bait played for me all last year in throughout the fall which really really made me happy and so i'm hoping turning around going back in the spring that i'll be able to pick up this spinner bait again and put a lot of fish in the boat and kind of in that same vein of thought obviously the bladed jig the bladed jig is going to be a great tool overall and it's a tool that you can have tied on you can have ready to go you guys know i love the bladed jig i talk about it all the time thunder cricket and the jackhammer are my two go-to's and it's going to kind of be the same thing you know what i mean you throw it in the same areas you would throw the spinnerbait and i think you're going to be amazed what would happen and i think for those shad that are spawning in the grass i think the bladed jig could even be a little bit better of a tool just because of the bladed jig's ability to get in and out of that kind of cover a little bit more effectively. The next one is gonna be a jerk bait. A lot of people think jerk bait, they think winter fishing, they say, you know, early spring fishing, but the jerk bait 
as a shad spawn tool and as a tool moving on into the summer is one of the best tools that you can have tied on and again a lot of different jerk baits here a lot of different variety of jerk baits one that i've been experimenting with a lot is the jackal rearrange this is a very loud bait it is a bait that you know if you've ever heard it it's just got a kind of different sound to it and it's a little bit bigger it's a little bit taller just the overall action and profile of this thing in the water is really really cool this is the 110 size and i also have the 130 size as well we can see we've got a bunch of jerk baits hanging out there but that's the 130 size um just a very very effective tool for me during the shad spawn especially when i'm dealing with fish that probably aren't surrounded by as many shad um, or they're you're targeting those fish who are kind of looking later on in the day I found as you get later on in the day and you're looking for fish that have moved up there and were feeding on that shad spawn but the sun's coming up now and now the shad spawns kind of starting to die off you pick up the jerk bait and you can get those fish even though they're just chock full of shad They've been eaten all night into the morning. You can get those fish to react to this jerk bait. Kind of use that deeper diving jerk bait, get it down in there, hang it in front of their face. And it's one of those things that's kind of like me or you at a ball game. You know, you go to your buddy's house for the ball game, and it's like, well, there's one chicken wing left. I guess I'll eat that one chicken wing. You know, obviously fish don't reason like we do, but I think sometimes that's kind of what the instinct is as well. If there's one more dying shad up there that I can kill, maybe I need to go kill it. Again, another one, the Vision 110 Plus one. That's always my go-to. Um, the Dual Realis, I love the Dual Realis. The Pencil 110, I think is what it's called, or just the Jerk Bait 110. I love the Dual Realis. Again, you'll notice all these are shag colors. And then obviously, the KVD Deep Diving Jerk Bait is always a staple in my boat. I'm gonna have to get me some like hook covers or something for all these jerk baits. But just a bunch of different jerk baits. Try a bunch of different sounds. Try a bunch of different cadences. Um, but definitely a tool that as you get later on into the day and as those fish have kind of stopped eating on that shad spawn, that shad spawn's kind of died off. Pick up that as a tool. Find some of those fish. Throw it for those fish. Because again, I think it's just one of those things that's like, well, it's dying it's wounded what's well, one more shad to add to the pile that i've already ate then we're going to get into some more of our just like big crazy top waters you know these are going to be your whopper ploppers and your wake baits and a bait that i found several years ago um, is the jackal chan wake now this is a ginormous top water bait uh, i believe this thing weighs an ounce and some change and it is a big loud crazy wake bait you've got this prop on the back that squeaks and clanks as you reel it. You've got this crazy rattle inside that rattles while you reel it. And then you've obviously also got that giant profile. And what I found with this bait is, this is a great bait to target fish that are in deep water. And so what you'll have like around a dam is obviously like dam walls. It can be a hundred foot deep in, you know, on the sides of dam walls and around dam riprap and stuff like that. And if you are trying to draw those fish up, you've got to have something loud and you got to have something crazy. And I've had a great success catching big, big smallmouth and spotted bass on this chan wake because it will draw them out of that deep water and really get their attention just because of how crazy and intrusive that it actually is. This is also a great tool for if you're specifically targeting stroppers um, during the shad spawn just really big really just angry kind of bait it's got those big hooks on there you don't have to worry about anything bending out but the jackal chan wake in this bone color and even more specifically in this color right here this is called jungle i believe it's just a crazy dark profile and it stands out you know it stands out in that massive shad that's up there and it's a tool that you can use to catch some really really big magnum fish and i think that's kind of the deal with this you're not going to catch a lot of little fish but you're definitely going to catch a lot of bigger fish and then obviously the whopper plopper whopper plopper is a great tool for the shad spawn um, another tool for when you just need something that is going to stand out that is going to create a lot of noise going to draw those fish out and i found that the whopper plopper specifically is great around man-made hard cover dam walls riprap and dock docks are the deal dock posts with this thing for some reason and i, I so the guys at tactic bass and actually talked about this one time and they kind of verbalized it 
and then, and then it helped me to actualize what was actually going on. And what I noticed is that I was getting a lot of bites on a whopper plopper around docks specifically. And what they said was like, we think that it works around docks specifically because the sound of that plopper turning actually reflects off of that wood and creates a very unique sound that makes those fish want to eat it. And I kind of started to notice that when I fished this thing around hard cover, I fished it off anything that that sound could bounce off of in the water that I was getting a lot more bites. And so around wood, the whopper plopper seems to be one of the most effective tools during the shad spawn just because of the sound that it makes and kind of that sound profile as it bounces off of that wood just puts fish into the boat. So whopper plopper for sure. And if you ever cast one of those things up into a boat dock slip and there's a big fish that swaps that thing off the top, you will absolutely crap your pants because of the sound that it makes. To keep moving, we're gonna move into the tool that I love. I love, love, love this tool. And that is going to be the square bill crankbait. Now what's cool about these two square bills right here is these are my signature series colors from monster bass and this is my signature series <coughs> this is my signature series crankbait from monster bass it's the hammerhead 1.5 alex red fishing edition this is the silent edition as well but these are colors that you guys have never seen before so you get a little sneaky peeky there not much but these are two shad profiles that we've got coming out but again a square bill very very effective tool especially when you're dealing with very shallow spawning shad you know it's a tool that you can get in and out of a lot of places that you can't get many other tools like i love to call this thing it's the four by four of the fishing world and so I love to throw this thing around all kinds of different hard cover, and it's kind of the hard cover bait, right? Deflects off of things very, very well. Um, it helps to look just like a shad. That is the perfect little shad profile. And we've got a couple really cool shad colors coming out. They're going to do a really good job of mimicking shad. And you know, for fish, again, target fishing. These aren't for areas with a ton of shad in them because what you'll actually end up doing is hooking a lot of shad. Um, that's one thing I want to talk about topwaters and all that. You'll be amazed how many shad that you actually hook just because they're up there trying to spawn with it and they just hook themselves. And so I like to fish the square with more kind of target targeted situations where I'm trying to fish a specific piece of cover where I think that those shad are spawning or where I can see those shad are spawning. And it just does a really good job of deflecting and creating a lot of commotion and disturbing a lot of water to help to stand out in the mass of shad that are gonna be up there and eating. So definitely the square bill is going to be a titanic tool during the shad spawn. And then the last one, I'm gonna grab out of the box and I will be right back. And we're back folks. The last one is going to be a big, paddle tail swim bait and more specifically the mega bass mag draft eight inch paddle tail swim bait this thing is a uh, hell of a tool during the shad spawn because just like everything else we talked about today you want to stand out right you want to show those fish something that is going to stand out in the mass of shad that are up there and as we get later on down in the day and those shad have quit spawning you can throw this thing right there and you can put some absolutely giant fish into the boat just because i think that it is a big profile it's a big piece of meat and kind of just like the jerk bait when they see this thing come lumbering by it's not like well it's just one more shad it's like dang look at the size of that shad and they take the opportunity to absolutely crush this thing and actually the first swim bait fish that i ever caught was during the shad spawn i caught a six pounder on one cast and the five and, a half, five and a half on the very next cast throwing this exact mag draft right here and as you guys can see this thing's had the eyes knocked off of it it's all chewed up chewed to pieces the you know the little fins have got holes all in them the the hook rash and just you know paints all tore off of it and it's because it is such a effective tool during the shad spawn and a tool that will put a lot of big fish into the boat just because it is a big piece of plastic. It's a big piece of meat for that fish to try to eat. And it does a really good job of standing out in the mass of shad that are up there shallow. And it is really just, it's cool. It's a cool bite. And I, you know, I tell a lot of people, they're like, man, I want to get into big swim bait fish. And I often tell them, pick up the mag draft, you know, fish it during the shad spawn, fish it during those times of year when those fish are focusing on those bigger baits. And um, like Chris Saldane said one time in a seminar that I heard, that most of the time when something that big comes swimming through the water column, it's usually not fake and a fish will take an opportunity to try to kill it. And they definitely do with this thing. But guys, that was a lot of baits. We covered a lot of stuff. I'll have everything linked down below. Go check it out. 
Um, I'll make sure and put some colors out beside them so you know the colors that I like to throw as well. Obviously, most of them are going to be shad patterns. Um, I'll link all the, you know, the wake baits and the jerk baits and everything like that will be linked down below. So go check out those links. But as always, you guys are sweet. I'm thankful for watching.